The game that brought back my love for video games was Monster Hunter World very explicitly because I was already getting jaded and tired of every single god game that I saw coming out having this focus on animation fidelity and making sure everything had to be seen and visualized so the player could gaze upon the incredible effort the dev team went through and then I played Monster Hunter World where I was on something's head and it just shoved itself through a wall and I still could just like shove my sword into its skull even though I couldn't see its head or me and I was just having fun and I went Oh my god, a video game. Like, <laughs> I haven't played a game that was not ashamed to be a video game and have a big budget at the same time in in uh, five years. I wanted to watch this. I, I I got about halfway through it off stream and we play MMOs on here though. And I talk about RuneScape a lot and I talk about FF14 a lot. With the current state of the game industry, I thought this was a fun topic. I've been on this spree of trying basically every major MMO recently and uh, it got me thinking and I might be the first one to ever have this thought, but I don't think we're getting another good MMO for a while. Probably not. Come out, they follow a very similar life cycle. A big mountain slope. You start out at the top, everyone's talking about the game, and it kind of just slopes down and, and loses its player base over time. I mean, it it's a typical life cycle for a game, very natural. MMORPGs, on the other hand, follow a very different looking life cycle. They come in all shapes and sizes. They might... Can we... Can, okay, I'm gonna be a big fucking nerd for a second. Can we... <laughs> can we talk for just a second about how good RuneScape's map is? What's RuneScape? What do you mean, what's RuneScape? What do you mean? What's RuneScape? A game Brazilians play. What are you talking about? Man, don't ask me what RuneScape is. You're making me, I don't even, it's not even like I feel old. I just feel disappointed. But yeah, that's, that's RuneScape. You all asking what RuneScape is, kill, is killing me though. Oh my God. They might start out with a bang, they might start out at the bottom and work their way up. But basically, the way you know if an MMO is good and it had any sort of success, long term, over the span of many years, it kind of looks like a real fucked up EKG. It's like it's the game's <laughs> pulse or something. Never healthy or stable, but it's there, which is what counts. It's been quite a while since we've seen a real banger of an MMO. It kind of feels like the MMO industry has always just been this game of King of the Hill, and the ones at the top have ascended so high that there's really no catching up to them. It's really he makes a good again i just to for transparency i watched to about here this is where i got so i got six minutes into this video before i was like i want to watch this on stream i'm going to pause he makes a good point later about this but it, it and i'm gonna i'm gonna reiterate it again probably when he makes it but there's some people here who play mmos do you have any desire to go play any other mmo like at all alongside the MMO you have? Nope, I don't. I have no desire. The only other MMO I have a desire to play is RuneScape. And it's it's specifically because RuneScape offers something FF14 does not offer to me. I got three MMOs I play. What three, I'm curious. Yeah, I don't. Maybe during content drought. Even that, I, I, we'll, we'll talk about this tomorrow. So I'm trying to keep... Uh, <laughs> this doesn't mean you can't talk about FF right now. My like For stream topics that I bring, though, if the conversation moves to FF14, it moves to FF14. But I'm trying to keep deep FF14 stuff on FF days. But that it, it's interesting that you bring up the content drought because there's a game fact thread that I want to talk about tomorrow that I found of someone that's like, man, it's really hard to just know that all the content is useless in this game until Dawn trails out. And then it's only going to be fun for two weeks. And it's, we'll talk about it tomorrow in depth, but it, it's content droughts. Interesting because I'm a runescape player. I came from runescape and I just showed you guys what runescape is about a very short, like, uh, you know, shallow, but I gave you a quick re like rundown of what you do in RuneScape. You you pick a skill and you go level that skill. That is RuneScape. You go you go do a thing to level the skill that you want to level. That's all you do. 
And alongside that, that content drought mentality is interesting to me because as a RuneScape player, I can just, I don't, if my skill's at level 99, I can still go do it. I can still go cut down trees or I can, I can still craft bows to work on fletching. I can still, you know, I can work on smithing even if it's a 99. I can still go do those things because there's reasons to go do it. And I feel like there's a disconnect between me and people who don't have that drive to just hang out. And I think it's because I'm RuneScape. My through line is I can do those things and talk to people. I can't do that in FF because a lot of these activities in FF are so hectic and we've talked about it before, but if I if I'm in diatom and I'm mining, it's it's, it's like Jesus Christ, don't do that. It's like, oh, spawn mount, run to node, dismount, tink, 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 spawn mount, run to node, dismount, spawn mount, run to node, get off mount, and repeat over and over and over and over. And there's no time to talk to anybody. But in RuneScape, you guys just saw how long it took me to kill the cow. I didn't even kill the cow. I got it to like 5% HP and we walked away. But... There's downtime in RuneScape where you go to do your skill and you start the activity and then you have a chance to talk to people or organize your inventory or do other things. And FF doesn't let me do that. Or it'd be timed nodes, spawn mount, go to X, misery, depression, make lunch, <laughs> then dink dock. Can we talk about the, the stones that only come out at certain times of day? FF14, Star Wars, The Old Republic, and a bit of Guild Wars 2. I never played Guild Wars 2. I never played KOTOR. Or not not KOTOR. Uh, Star Wars Old Republic. I haven't played that. Wait, so you don't interact with people in FF14? I'm going to be honest. When it, here, This is going to sound backwards to people that played old MMOs, probably. And especially RuneScape players. In FF14, I... This is going to sound so... Saying it sounds ass backwards. And it's my biggest problem with FF14. I genuinely feel like I have more time to talk with somebody during a raid while I'm dodging mechanics than I do while crafting or doing any genuine side activity. That should I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna say this with the authority that I am the only case and I'm the only person with legitimate experience, but it, it feels like this to me. That should indicate how busy disciple of hand and land can feel versus doing raids that are I grant I'm not doing savages, but I am doing raids that do kick your ass if you don't pay attention. Near raids, some of the evilest raids. I feel more comfortable talking and chat to people and getting responses in those than I ever have when doing crafting or gathering in FF14 because it's such a rat race to gather in that game. And it's not because you're competing with people, it's just the nodes don't last. And it's frustrating. It's a goddamn nightmare. It's my biggest problem with FF14 which is the only way you can communicate with people and genuinely have a chance to talk with them is if you sit around Limsa or somewhere and you and you chat. And it's annoying because it, it's it's almost an accessible not accessibility. It's like an intimidation check almost, which is not like a, it's not like a mechanic, but I'm going to call it that. Where are you willing to insert yourself into the limsa POTD is a social space for me that's another place yes potd is a place you can't talk but I, again i would say potd is it's 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 a raid it's a raid scenario you're doing mechanics you you i feel like people feel more comfortable talking during mechanics than they do while mining and that is not how the game should work and i'm not saying it should be inversed i'm saying during mining though you should not feel like you cannot take your hand away from what you're doing. And it's frustrating. 
I come from RuneScape, where most of my friends, but not most, all of them, I would wager, I met while fishing or chopping down trees. And in FF, the only people I've added to my friends list are people, we've talked about it before, but I met outside of the door to like a, to like a quest thing that I was waiting for a, another friend to finish and they were waiting for a friend to finish and we, we were like the two fucking parents at the grocery store going hey is it their first time yeah how about yours is it their first time yeah how long you been playing I don't know since around like Stormblood cool I've been playing since Shadowbringers Send friend request. Accept friend request. Friend comes outside. Hey, I'll see you around, alright? Yeah, good luck. Have fun with the game. Enjoy the story. And then we never talk to, to each other ever again. Because immediately we're already off to doing something else. There was no reason to, to hang around each other or naturally form some sort of bond in that time. There was no reason to just hang out, period, and get to know each other. But in RuneScape, last time online seven years ago, <laughs> it's so realistic. That's exactly what happens though. I have like five people on my friends list that that is happening. I have a few. I have there's a there's a Johnny Bravo cosplayer, uh, Ro, I believe, that always dresses up in Gridania. And his name was Johnny Bravado. And I added him. But I added him because we were sitting in Gridania for about three hours one night. We were all just hanging out and talking and emoting at each other. Never fucking seen the dude again. Ever. Ever. FF14 is almost scared to let you have any sort of real social interaction, I feel like, outside of explicit RP areas where the the name of the game is talking to each other. Bojan, you record more social content, which people were mad that Inwalker didn't have that content. Oh, no, I'm as someone who came in at Shadowbringers, I'm annoyed that it didn't have it retroactively because I didn't know what Boja was until halfway through Endwalker when I started doing Boja. Boja's awesome. I love Boja. Boja's so fucking cool. <laughs> so you're saying you RP'd with Johnny Bravo for three hours? <laughs> yes. It's really hard to imagine them being dethroned, and there's not going to be many that try. Because not only is developing a massive multiplayer online role-playing game one of the hardest things you can do as a video game developer, but it's also probably the dumbest thing you can do. We can't go into something like that until I tell you about something that someone's going to pay me to tell you about. So, 2023 was... Do you all want to watch this ad for some, some cool super mutant powder you can shove into your body? Do people have to cover for each other's weaknesses or can you just be a monolith? What do you mean? Here, I'm gonna let the ad play, but I'm gonna make it really quiet in the background. Involuntary weight loss. It wasn't fun. So this year I've made it a priority to make sure that I'm getting everything I need for both mental and physical I think, I think the person I found playing White Mage for POTD run for clearing coils for me for my Dragoon Glam, or Dark Knight Glam. Like this simple response to me might be, well, Cell, you have to be proactive. You you have to you have to be proactive at like wanting to play at a party and play with people again and again. Completely fair. However, FF14 as a platform for communication does not attempt to sow any seed to allow that to naturally happen. I have to fight against the game and the mindset the game instills in you, the player, to make that happen. And it's really frustrating. Do different players... Wait, do players have different skill sets and rely, therefore, on each other? Different crafting specializations, roles for raids? They're capable of doing everything solo? No. Um, so, if you're over-leveled and you're doing things unsynced, I'm going to cover this because somebody will be like, well, sell technically. Uh, yes, you can do things solo. But FF14 is a game where you are always leveled for the content you are doing. 
because you're always over leveled by i'm gonna say minimum to be very conservative two or three levels you're always very over leveled so when you go into a dungeon you're usually like if it's a level 40 dungeon you're probably level 46 and then the game levels you back to level 40 and you only have level 40 abilities so for example i'll give you a party layout in ff14 you have a samurai me you might have a warrior for the tank and you might have a white mage and then you might have a, like a dancer dancer will cast an ability on me that i believe aeon correct me if i'm wrong the dancer's ability it share it, it like boosts my damage damage and like also shares that buff back to the dancer uh, so the dps's are doing more damage now so dancer supports the other dps in a very proactive manner without healing obviously white mage is general healer so white mage would be heal focused on healing the tank keeping them alive and then topping off dps is if we get ourselves into a bad way dps's job is then to protect the healer from ads or anything else that might target them as a priority target since they're healer and tank if they're warrior uh, warrior is a good example of a tank that can kind of solo things depending on how they handle their their mitigation abilities that will help them soften the damage that's coming in. Uh, so to answer your question, the short answer, yes. FF14 is one of the more strict varieties of class assignments that you'll find in an MMO. Where if, if you get a role, your role is going to have a very so specific job. job. Back to floor. <laughs> yes, mine is to die. Your role is going to be a very explicit job that you're supposed to be doing. If you are... If, if you are unsynced, though, you can kind of do whatever you want. And there is some content where even if you are slightly overleveled, it's still really hard. And you still would want to go in with some support or just more DPS. It, it's... If you're doing MSQ though, if you're doing, this is why I say FF14 is an RPG and then an, then an MMO. If you're doing main scenario quest or story, everything is level synced. So you're always going to have two DPSs, a healer, a tank. If it's a light party or four man, if it's eight man or a full party, you will have two tanks, two healers, and then uh, four DPSs. So eight people need so players have to cooperate but why is it so hard to talk to people if you're forced to coordinate so that's that this is where ff and what i was saying about how ff14 can we get back to like a, a screen okay this is where what i said about ff comes back into play where i feel more comfortable and i feel like people are more proactive at talking during actual raids because there's a reason to communicate there is an underlying drive established within the player to talk to each other. And it's exactly what you just mentioned. It, it is specifically that everyone has a job and communication will make the dungeon work. And that doesn't mean that non-communicative parties are not going to make anything. Most dungeons, here is how parties go. We pop in. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi, I'm new. First time. And we all go, no worries, dude. And then we don't talk at all. Maybe we wipe or something happens. We maybe start joking around and chat about it. And that's about it. If it's a big raid, if it's a 24 man. And... Uh, the alliance so each eight man is an alliance there's three alliances for 24 people then in the alliance chat usually that's where all the shit posting takes place where everyone's just kind of having fun and talking and and shooting the shit the most social areas in ff i've been in are the 24 man raids and the eight man raids because four man yes you're usually focusing on things and if it's a harder duty or a harder trial. Yeah, you're usually just focused. You're usually just paying attention or you're dead braining it and you're not even paying attention to the game. You're all tapped. But the the consistency that I've noticed is during dungeons, during raids, during trials, people are more comfortable with communicating and talking than I have ever seen outside of them. No, I the mo here here's my interaction in FF14. 
e every time. It, it's always eh, nice glam. And then they leave. They run past. They tell me they're, my glam is nice. And then they leave. Outside of FF14's dungeons, that's what I get. I get someone going, hey, I like your outfit. That's it. That's the only interaction. There's no reason to talk to me. Ever. At all. You did get a head pat. Yes. <laughs> I got a head pat and three million from a stranger in a bar. But it's frustrating. And I wish... FF would do something to rework the way <sighs> the way cra just gathering worked if anything to foster that sociability because it's an MMO at an MMO's core, it is a social experience. Explicitly. That's the that's the whole draw of an MMO. It is you're in a world with other people. This comes back to what I asked a minute ago with who here Pat, who here plays anything other than the MMO they play? And I know we're not like small sample size, but all but I think one of you in chat said, no, I just play one game. I play one MMO. And why would you play any other MMO? Play XI if that counts. That's... <laughs> <laughs> so people just do their thing. Do you think making raids harder would force more communication? Oh, there's already enough communication, man. Like with raids, that's I, I, it's the reason why we're silent in raids is because there's no reason to talk other than shit posting. Like if if I could leave my chat uncovered, or if 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 we ever do off stream things in the Discord, and it, you could see the chat, ninety five percent of any communication in in raids is shit posting and just shooting the shit with random people and having fun. It's almost never an explanation of mechanics or anything else unless someone needs it. And that's why I always encourage new players. When you go into a duty, go, hey, it's my first time. Anything I should be aware of. And usually you get two answers. No or yes, but I'll explain when we get there. And you get to a boss. And the tank just runs in and you go, okay. And it's a simple fight and you have no problem. You get to the, the next boss, same thing. You get to the third boss and then everybody stops and a wall of text hits your chat. And it's this list of things to be careful of or a short pair, like short two sentence paragraph hits your chat. And it's a very short list of like, yeah, phase two, watch out for this. It, at the start of phase three, he's going to do this. Don't, don't worry about X thing. There's communication. It, it's just only in raids though which is why i'm frustrated i don't see it outside of it because the only communication i get outside of it is quick passerby hey i like your outfit it looks cool and that's it and it's very frustrating the thing that got me thinking about this the most came from a situation that's been kind of brewing up over the last three years in june 2021 riot games put a post up on their website calling for any game developers that are wanting to enter the world of MMORPGs with them. And this was amazing news because it's pretty common knowledge at this point that Riot Games tends to not miss. The things they've been making, pretty good. When the MMO community was welcoming them with open arms. If you've kept up with the MMO world in the last three, four years, you know that the community is kind of still waiting for that game to come along that's just gonna change everything. There was no real official news released for the next two years. The only set in stone thing we got was that Greg Street, who was the producer of the project, was leaving the company. Pretty soon after, he announced that he was launching his own company, making his own MMO. It was just very disappointing because he was extremely involved in the community and just had a lot of indicators that he really cared about this and was gonna do his best to make it an actual game-changing, enjoyable MMO. Obviously hope for the best. But now about a year later, there's whispers and rumors that this Riot MMO might not even be happening, which honestly would be the least surprising thing I've heard in the last three hours. Just 10 more years for the ride MMO, five for Ashes of Creation. I have, I have complete faith we will see the Riot MMO at some point. 
I have zero faith that it's going to come out in the next five years. And I have near zero faith that it's going to have any staying power. I feel like company publishing companies in particular that do not know games in the first place as like a technical thing. Look at MMOs and they look at FF14 and they look at WoW. And it's kind of the same here. I'll point, I'll use destiny. It's a different genre, but I'll use destiny because destiny likes to market itself as a, we're, we're like a pseudo MMO destiny, almost single-handedly spawned the live service it, concept. I feel like in the modern era and people look at MMOs the same way we saw publishers looking at destiny and the biggest example of how you don't do destiny and i want to be clear not mechanically but like philosophically from a monetization standpoint it would be anthem because anybody who i partook in the anthem beta anybody who played anthem in the open like pre-alpha or beta or whatever i think we would all very very quickly agree anthem felt amazing mechanically Anthem had some of the coolest maneuverability, but I feel like companies look at MMOs the same way companies looked at Destiny and they go, oh man, why don't we do that? Look at FF14. Look at how much money it brings in Square Enix. It kind of like funds their entire catalog of projects. What they don't understand is you need to allow your dev team to care about the product. Do you know Nahi? <laughs> you need to let them have fun you can't stifle your your creative people you need to let them breathe you need to protect them you need to insulate them from the bureaucratic bullshit that floats down in the name of profits if you want a game like ff14 if you want a game like like, wow, in its prime, make it louder. <laughs> you cannot just release a Justice League movie. The reason why the Avengers is such a fun movie, even though I'll agree it is, it is not cinema. It's not Shawshank. It's not Goodfellas. It's it's just a fun superhero popcorn movie. The reason why it's so emotionally engaging, though, is because we got Iron Man, the Hulk, Thor, Captain America. Like We got all of these individual things to build up the cast. You mean I can't immediately have 4 billion subs in the first week with no content and compete with games that have decades of organic growth? I don't know if we'll see the Riot MMO. <laughs> Back to what we were talking about. I don't know if we will. Sorry, excuse me. I don't know if the mic picked that up. You can if you're good. He also made Lahi. Lahi's a like okay song. I just don't like the vocals for it. I love the night version of Rock Tika Greatwood's theme because it's Lahi, but it's just like the piano. It's really pretty. At least. Riot Games has set a huge bar for themselves, which has raised everybody's expectations for everything they ever make. I can't tell you. Arcane's overrated. There's your hot take for this this whole stream. Arcane's overrated. I've also never seen it. I'm waiting for once. Uh, I'm waiting for once human. It can be fun, but it's not a game changer. <laughs> what is once human? Is that an MMO? When confidence, whether or not this. Game also, Breath of the Wild is bad. I, look, I have played Breath of the Wild. I, I yes, I do not like Breath of the Wild. I think objectively, it it is. It is a game that is provably scraped too thin. To quote Bilbo, Breath of the Wild should be a, saying, I feel like butter scraped over too much bread. So, I have a challenge for I you. Know, I don't shh, five bottom shh, actions. shh, shh. But I'm beginning to feel it in my heart. Lord of the Rings is on. I feel thin, sort of stretched like... I love Lord of the Rings. Whoops, I thought we were done with the browser for a second. 
<laughs> okay, I'm back. Least. Riot Games has set a huge bar for themselves, which has raised everybody's expectations for everything they ever make. I can't tell you in confidence whether or not this game's happening or not. What I can tell you without a doubt is that it has been a bumpy ride behind the scenes. And if you Every MMO is. Riot is most likely fearing, if you look up New World's player count history and see how that unfolded, you can see just how risky it is to release an MMO in uh, the, the modern era of gaming. I've got around... Well, to be fair to New World, when your chat box allows you to load up JPEGs and PNGs on remote client systems that maliciously cover their screen and disables their ability to interact with the game. I mean, to be fair to New World. Imagine having Amazon money backing you and you screw the pooch that bad. It's... I don't know the I didn't play New World. I didn't follow it too closely, but it it's it it sounds like a scenario similar to what happened with Bethesda and Fallout 76 where the team in Texas just was not given the resources or tools to make a make a game that was Fallout 76 to the point where they had to send out support emails and go we literally don't have the tools to moderate the game. So apologies, but your items are lost it's wild, but I feel like New World had the same circumstances. No, I will not react to Dark Vapor. Are you as it is unethical? <laughs> About exploits, Tarkov has one where PV items can be transferred to PVP areas so you can print money and items. Ooh, that sounds fun. I would say that sounds bad, but we dislike Tarkov now, so that just sounds fun. I found 760 hours played on New World and was a part of the community during the rise and fall of it. And I also saw how quickly that new and refreshing ideas can completely drain the life out of a player base if done incorrectly. New World game design caught up with itself. Not really sure how long that, that game's gonna be up for. Probably some of the most fun I've had gaming during its peak. And I really wish things were handled differently so that it wasn't in the condition it's in now. It was a good game with uh, some crucial things wrong with it. And I'm going to give New World until quarter three, 2025. That, that you can, you can mark my, my words on that. Quarter three, 2025 is when they'll shut it down. Either that or quarter four, 2025 for the holiday season, they're going to try to do some big little relaunch thing. Another issue with Real World is auto mod moderation. You can ban players by mass reporting. <laughs> That's absurd. <laughs> Sounds fun until you hear of inflation. We actually did. We we talked about that a little earlier when we were uh, when we were talking about Yoshi. When we were talking about this. Believe it or not, it did come up. Ended up being the reason for its downfall. An MMO can only handle so many mistakes to the point where even a company uh, that gets their funds from Amazon themselves can't really do anything for you anymore. So there's been some sprinkles of MMO here and there. A lot of underwhelming Kickstarter projects. Some that are in a permanent early access phase. Ones that scam hundreds of thousands of dollars somehow. But in the last like five years, I think New World and Lost Ark are the only two. Did I ever talk? Wow, no. Most of the people here wouldn't even know what I'm going to be talking about. Holy shit. I, back when I first started streaming, when I was still kind of figuring out if I wanted to like lean into the VTuber thing or not, it should be obvious by now where my, my head landed on that. I did a collab with a bunch of VTubers, all of whom were super cool. Like genuinely, they were all actually really cool. I'm not just saying this because of like on stream professionalism. No, they were all super fucking cool people. Um, don't talk to any of them anymore, though. But they were all really cool. And we did a Lost Ark collab where we played Lost Ark. It was, I think, like the first week where it was free or something. Or like the first few days it was out. I have never seen a game that has grossed me out quite like Lost Ark has. For people that don't understand the... I don't know if they fixed this. If they fixed it... I, Honestly, if they fixed it, I don't care. The fact that they did it in the first place shows that you should never trust Lost Ark. Ever. So early on, when you went into dungeons, healers or support class characters could not resurrect you if you died. 
Period. They had they did not have that ability. In an MMO, I want to be very clear with that. It's an MMO. And you could not be Isn't resurrected by like support GTW characters. W or something? Uh yeah. A little bit. The way you resurrected in dungeons were these little white feathers that you got. And someone, if this is if this if this makes it into the YouTube version of the video or segment. Uh, someone will probably be like, well, you can actually grind those out. That's not my point. That's not the point at all. And you're not engaging with my argument. Go, Don't even leave your comment. I'm going to shadow ban you from the channel if you try to use that as a counter argument. In the middle of a dungeon, if you do not have any feathers, that's it. You're done. And back when it first released, if you're in the middle of a dungeon... And you die, I believe it was impossible to to complete the dungeon. So you'd have to restart the dungeon. Got to get the Phoenix Downs, huh? Oh, we're getting there. So what this created was a peer pressure loop of, oh man, come on, just, just go to the shop. Just buy a feather. Just buy a feather. They're 25 cents, bro. Just buy a feather. It's a fucking quarter. Don't make us redo the whole dungeon. Just buy a feather, dude. It's a quarter. That might be the grossest thing I've ever encountered in any game. I will never be interested in anything the Lost Ark developer or the publisher themselves ever lay their hands on. Ever. Because of that. That was vile and extremely underhanded. Is this back when he had the helium voice? Yes. <laughs> That's fucking genius. Oh, it's it's genius. It's also evil. It is the grossest. I didn't complain about it too much on the stream when we did the collab. I was trying my damnedest to hold my tongue until after the collab was over because everyone else was super into the game. And I was the only one that seemed to be bothered by uh, the MMO trying to create a peer pressure loop where That's not you would be right. bullied. That's just pay for advantage, Jeff. Hello. Yeah, pay for advantage is what I would call Lost Art. A company asking that badly for a quarter is just sad. Oh, it's gross. It's the best example of nickel and diming players. And this is why I, I said I will shadow ban you if you try to make the counter argument to me of, well, you can grind for the feathers. Because you're not engaging with the point. The point is the company explicitly created a psychological bullying based system where your friends and party members will go, man, you're ruining our time. Just spend a quarter, goddammit. Or however much they were at the start. It is the grossest thing I've ever seen in my life. Two MMOs that can claim they've had any kind of success. I've never played Lost Ark before. I tried looking up some stuff to get some more insight about it, but just like any MMO, you try to get information on it. It's gross. Don't play it. It also has cut content at the very start of it because they had an intro. They had a whole intro sequence that they completely chopped out because apparently it like ruined the flow of the game. And by ruin the flow of the game, I'm wagering people went, no, it takes too long to get started. So people might click off of the game. Put some subway surfers in the bottom right corner of the leveling menu screen so when people are selecting their stats, they don't get distracted. Literally rummaging in your pocket for loose change. Is it though? Remember arcades? Those were created to suck quarters out of all the children's pockets. They were also super hard because of that. This is what they mean by arcade mode. Yeah, there's a reason why we don't tolerate it anymore too. <laughs> like there's, a, there's a reason why arcades are notorious for just that. <laughs> because yes arcades also had boards that would suicide now we love arcades we love the concept of arcades through our lens of nostalgia they're neat oh they're neat arcades are more about the social aspect yeah we love the concept of arcades we do not look back on the execution of arcades with with genuine regard in a positive light. 
We look back at arcades with a negative regard for the execution of how they were built to take your money. What we look at for a, in a positive light is the social aspect and the fact that the games were fun. That shit was predatory. Yeah, it was. I was kind of interested in the Lost Ark, but never mind now. Lost Ark was... It, it, it's... The amount of manipulative design that comes out of most just Korean grind MMO style games is it's wild and it's wild that people tolerate it. And that's why I was so annoyed with it. We're not going to get on the stellar blade train again. It's, it's why I was so annoyed with the stellar blade drama that I'm saying or was saying, and it's still floating around, but with the like, oh, Eve is sexualized, it's sexist, this is gross, but oh man, fucking Nikkei and Genshin and all my other waifu games, don't you dare criticize those. Those aren't sexual, those are, she looks cute. Atelier Razor, is, no, it's just a cute design, no it's not, it's, it, it is borderline, it is borderline, like, just... <sighs> clickbait material to get you in bunny garden says hi that sounds familiar hold on what is bunny garden that sounds weirdly familiar bunny garden oh wait i saw this oh i saw this yeah this was on this was on steam i don't know if i can show this <laughs> it was, i couldn't figure out but i saw this on steam i couldn't figure out if this was porn or not was it porn it's from illusion oh it's porn <laughs> I couldn't figure out if it was porn or not. It's from Illusion, though? Hold on. I need to be signed in to look at this. Hold on. It's not from Illusion. It's from uh, Curate. No, Illusion got shut down, I thought. I thought Illusion like filed for bankruptcy. You can play without the corn. You can say porn in my chat. It's not going to be. No, well, I mean, it might be flagged, but I'll, I'll let it through. All the VTubers are playing it. Man, I had a game I wanted to play tonight, too. <laughs> the title of the stream is people are playing pools. But pool's closed, so we do a little unknown horror game. I had a cool game I found. It was like a horror golf game. And I wanted to play it because there's a Jacob Geller video that I really want to watch. I don't know if we're going to get to it tonight. <laughs> you did this to yourself, you know? I thought we'd get through the video sooner. I'm sorry. It's players that have hundreds or thousands of hours just complaining about things, not giving any real insight to the casual experience of the game. What I can tell you is that it's nowhere near competing with the top dogs of the MMO world. So doesn't deserve to be up there. And New World's fumble, they got me thinking, why is this so hard? What is going on? Just, 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 just RuneScape. That's, that's Rune, don't play this one though. This is bad RuneScape. That's bad RuneScape. That's RuneScape 3. Don't play this one. This one this one is loot box filled. Do not play this one. Go play old school. There's no pay to win bullshit there. Go play old school RuneScape. It's really good. Don't play this one. This one's bad. Alright guys, we made it to chapter one of the video. How did we get here? <laughs> we made it to the first chapter. <laughs> Making an MMO has to be the most irresponsible, stupidest idea you could ever go through with. In the last 10 years, there have been 20 MMOs notable enough to make the Wikipedia page. And I see Firefall. Firefall was so good. Oh my God. Firefall was headed up by, I think, is it Mark Kern? Is that the, is that the Blizzard like head? that everyone hates now. He ruined that game, I believe. I think it was Mark Kurd. Was it Mark Kurd? Creep Corner is my favorite tag. 
Firefall was so good. And 12 of those are still up and running. Obviously, there's been more than 20 MMOs released, but I'm just not counting the ones that Josh Strife Hayes finds uh, buried in the deepest depths of the deep web uh, that peaked at 23 concurrent players. They don't really count right now. It's definitely uh, a dark age. Now, I would say when World of Warcraft went live in 2004, that is when the true golden age started. Some may say that when Ultima Online came out, it kind of changed the game. I don't really think an MMO golden age existed without WoW. It doesn't feel right to me. WoW did for MMOs what Fortnite did to Battle Royales. So you may have noticed once Fortnite saw success in its little side game mode of Battle Royale that wasn't even what they wanted their players to try, it caused about 55 to 100 other this is what i was talking about with what we see with mmos by the way <laughs> people look at destiny and then they tried to make a bunch of destiny clones and then the battle royale clones pop good came first <laughs> player knows was super fun you already answered but the second answer was more polite thank you wait what was my first answer <laughs> What was my first answer? Early player unknowns was peak. Early player unknowns gave me my favorite memory of just putting a frying pan in front of me while I was completely naked running across a 500 meter field at a random sniper and he just could not hit me. And then I kicked the shit out of him with my frying pan. <laughs> I've missed player unknowns. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just opened up the Discord. What the fuck is this? <laughs> Your first answer was the same, but it, the tone wasn't as nice. What do you mean? What do you mean my tone wasn't as nice? <laughs> My tone's always nice. Okay, actually, real talk. We ended stream last week, and I, Leo, I think you put in chat. You were like, "This is this is me getting parasocial back at you guys." I, I I put in my my raid message, and it was the cell cheer emotes, I believe, or like the cell hearts. And then Leo, I think you put the the regular just Twitch hearts. You're like four non subs. I I said, "What are those for?" And you explained, and I said, no, fuck non-subs. And then I just ended the stream. I have been stuck on that in my head, rent-free, for the last five days. Of just, man, I hope no one feels bad that they, they're not subscribed. <laughs> I hope no one feels bad. <laughs> to emerge. Once WoW showcased that you can build a long-term player base with as much success as it had, with as much money as it generated, not only with its initial launch in 2004, but with its expansions in 2007 and on, I mean, how do you not convince investors to let you try and build another WoW? So once this golden age started, much like the Battle Royale boom, we also got a few really, really good games to emerge alongside wow they're still here people playing them we also got uh an overwhelming people play worm of, of stinkers some real stinkers that are oh, hold on phoenix dynasty don't know pirates of the caribbean never played puppet guardian no idea smt had an mmo soul of the nation soul of the ultimate nation don't know star quest don't know tabula rasa sounds weirdly familiar tales of pirates no idea 12 sky don't know vanguard saga of heroes don't know Dark Dynasty Warriors had an MMO? City of Villains? Was that like a um, inversion of City of Heroes? Oh, there's City of Heroes right down there. It's also dead. Are not around anymore. MMOs were peaking in the mid 2000s. It was the thing to do. It was the style of game that players wanted to play. Even the projects that saw short term success uh, but didn't really survive, some still to this day have community backed projects, yeah. servers to keep the community alive. All these MMO games meant a lot to people. They proved to be this genre of game that you truly did become a part of. And even though the MMO scene was kind of slowing down in the late 2000s, early 2010s, games like Guild Wars 2 and Star Wars The Old Republic 
made their entry into the MMO scene and kind of picked up the stragglers that maybe weren't really happy with their games anymore or didn't really scratch the itch they wanted and were still able to give a lot of players their home base of a game. 2013 unknowingly became the grand finale of MMO. God, so I love RuneScape. Revival. Because in February, we got old school RuneScape. Yeah. Final Fantasy XIV. Both of them yeah. for the sake of redemption. I wasn't there for that. game was at an all-time low. Final Fantasy's first MMO, like three or four years earlier, Earlier, it was a huge flop, so both these companies basically tried again. And now, 11 years later, it's safe to say uh, that that both of them did something mm -hmm. something right. Confirmed. Since then, there's been a few notable MMOs that have come out, and they did okay. Elder Scrolls Online, Albion Online, Black Desert Online. These games are online, in case you were wondering. Lost Ark, New World, but none of them really made the impact they were probably hoping for. It's almost as if all players interested in MMOs have kind of found their place and stayed there. It really is kind of like finding your home base and that's just where you retreat back to at the end of the day. We're all kind of That's what I was that's what I was asking about at the start was like who else or who here that plays an MMO plays any other MMO? And everyone very much almost across the board entirely was like yeah, I'm a one home. I don't go anywhere else. It's like, I, I want to play RuneScape, but I don't want to play RuneScape for any other reason than like a safe thing, a safe place that I can like go back to and kind of re-experience. Honestly, a few days ago, I was thinking about maybe giving Helldivers a shot, but the stunts, but the stunts through making a PSN account mandatory made me, it gave me a great reason not to. Yeah, I, I haven't, the only reason I haven't refunded Helldivers is because I'm waiting to see if Sony backpedals. If they don't backpedal, then I'm going to refund the game. I'm not making a PSN account just to play Helldivers. I'm not going to make a PSN account to play Ghost of Tsushima. I said it earlier, but I'll say it again. I, in fact, own a boat. I own mini boats. I will, I will contact friends and borrow the game completely unrelated to owning boats i just want to make sure people know that i'm i'm a big fan of kayaking and being on the sea i remember when dc universe almost got popular but died because of how bad they were at power scaling was dc was dc universe the game that was on playstation like it was like the first mmo on playstation sad because I remember, yeah, I played that. I played that with my clan from SOCOM. We played DC Universe. I remember because like that was the only game we all played. We all played SOCOM. And then for about a month there, we played DC Universe for a little bit. And then we went back to SOCOM. Uh, safe and cozy in our MMOs right now, kind of making the most of it. But even though the kings are up there on that hill, it doesn't mean they're resting up there comfortably. The wrong mistake could send them tumbling down so at any these. moment. Those profitable, successful mm -hmm. games up there, they got up there with blood, sweat, and, and dev tears. A lot of dev, mostly dev tears. We now have insight to another reason of why creating an MMO is a really dumb idea. Money. Microtransactions have played a significant role in keeping these games alive. They've got... Can we talk about this for just a second? We're not going to get through this video tonight. I swear to God. Okay. Shad and I are... We've been... I, I mentioned it earlier. We've been... Uh, we're going to play Fallout 76 on stream at some point. We're probably going to play the play it on the alt stream. Can I... Can I show you guys play one thing really quick that pissed me off? That just kind of drove home how done I am with... With so many games. Give me just a second to get it up. But. Just. It, let Fallout 76 boot really quick. You won't see it right away. I, I just need a screenshot of something from, from the start of the game. But it's. It's genuinely driving me nuts. And it hammered home how tired I am of microtransactions and how tired I am. The almost enough currency pass classic. I'm not even going to get that specific about it. My, my problem isn't even with the fact that like they exist. My problem is with the presentation to the player. Okay, so here's the Endwalker menu. Play game, 
change data center, watch the, the cool trailers, options, and close game. That's it. There's nothing else. I mean, there's like version information if you care about version information, but that's it. Here's Fallout 76. Play the game, character, give us money, uh, give us money, money, and also uh, money, give us more money. I'm, I'm so spoiled by FF14, not even acknowledging the mock station exists inside of its game. The way they get money from players is not even acknowledged. I am so spoiled. We're all so spoiled by FF14. <laughs> I can't say no to Todd. He's so charming. I Todd is the face of the company. He gets a lot of shit. He is not the sole decision maker. I do believe Todd Howard actually does care about games. I do believe he really does. There are behind the scenes conversations we will not be privy to as players and as fans of Bethesda. But I th I don't think it's fair to like shoulder all responsibility onto him just because he's the face of the company. Cuz I think he really does care about games. And I have a I have a bunch of stuff on my list like, that I wanted to talk about about Bethesda. Like there, there's a Starfield update coming out, and it's like should they? It, there's an article that PC Gamer had wrote or written that was about you know should Starfield just be given up on, and they should they just focus on ES6 and the next Fallout game? And I don't want to get too off the track have, here, but it's Bethesda's in a weird place. I hope they can find their footing again. Is all I'll say. Microtransactions have played a significant role in keeping these games alive. They've got to pay a staff to maintain and update and create for the game so that they keep their players there. They've got to pay for these massive servers. I don't even know how much those things cost. And also making sure that they meet the quota so that the very top executive owner of the company gets the salary that they've written for themselves. Question, is Jagex milking their players? Um, well, yeah, it's quite a big question. Um, and whatever they need to do to get there, is what that that's this this is what i was talking about when i was like don't play runescape 3 this shit's what i was talking about do not play runescape 3 they gotta do subscriptions by themselves cannot sustain an mmo it could pay i always watch some josh josh dude for mmo reviews his name is josh strife hayes god damn it and we will say his full name in this house he's got a nice voice to listen to and goes nicely into detail Go watch his, go, anyone who doesn't know who Josh Strife Hayes is, go watch his stuff. Like, after stream, obviously. That's his name, though. Go watch him. Go check out his stuff. For WoW in 2007, when everybody was paying a $15 a month subscription on top of buying a $40 expansion every other year. But even that caught up. They have a shit ton of microtransactions. And obviously, that's more of a problem for the MMOs that make it big and they have all of these expenses. But any game that sees this big success is going to eventually run into this problem of how do we afford to keep this going. Back <laughs> I didn't say his full name because I didn't want to advertise this in one else's stream. <laughs> Fair, I appreciate that. There is a reason I do have a have my first rule set. What's going on with this guy in the background? No, you guys are covering that up. Why he strife haze? What's going on with that guy? Hold on. What what's going on with this man? Why is he like? <laughs> oh, he's like jumping. Wow. Okay, he's jumping. That's what's happening. <laughs> There's a reason I have a rule of like not talking about other streamers in chat until I bring them up. We brought up Josh Drive Hayes earlier, so you're good. Big, and they have all of these expenses, but any game that sees this big success is going to eventually run into this problem of how do we afford to keep this going. Back at my home base, I give Jagex a lot of money every year through subscriptions. I pay for my subscriptions. $80 a month? Man, I'm paying $80 every like six months for FF14. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm paying like $140 a year to play FF14. And Yoshi P still won't give me more inventory space. 
Birch Drive Hayes got it? Yes, exactly. Josh's ever expanding collection of mugs. <laughs> No one brought him up. He just came to mind since we were watching the video about MMOs. I brought him up. I talked about him. It was probably before you came in. On multiple accounts, as do other people. And Jagex makes millions off of players giving them monthly subscription money. But you may have noticed while we're over here frolicking in our flowers of polls and community involvement and fun, our brothers and sisters over at RuneScape 3 Cannot say the same. Is Jagex actually this oblivious? We're in a time where RuneScape, at least according to the majority of the vocal player base, feels like it's being neglected, and as someone who's been covering the news and following the game actively for years now, I also think it's being neglected. How does a company with hundreds of employees and, according to the most recently released financial statements, 137 million pounds in revenue, have the audacity to recolor a three-year-old outfit and sell it as part of some kind of limited edition pack i paid five dollars for these and then uh, about a year later they won another five dollars from me for the same goddamn emote that has the same goddamn animation and the only thing they did was change the rgb values of the goddamn sticks that we hold worth it it's not fucking worth it the mog station is getting genuinely a little too much I'm I'm genuinely getting tired of the Mog Station. This shit's already in the game. This is already in the game. This literally isn't ever okay. There is a, I said it a long time ago whenever I was talking about the Ice Heart attire, where I was like, it's already in the game, and I had to put a disclaimer that went, it's not exactly the same, but it's close. This literally is in the game. This is already in the game. The only difference is, is it's it's locked. It's locked to a class. It's locked to a fucking class. So you're paying. $12 to unlock it from the class. Which is absurd. Okay. Back to RuneScape though. RuneScape 3 has been contaminated with regularly updated toxic cash grabbing microtransactions. It's experiencing increments of worse. Players just begging the devs to please stop, as if the devs have any control over it. RuneScape 3 is the soldier spreading its arms, protecting us from projectiles, <laughs> while we sleep soundly, telling the devs that we're not fond of this idea they think they're having. What's up? Hey, Fats, okay, is. welcome in. But even old school RuneScape, as one of the most populated MMORPGs in modern gaming, only exists because RuneScape 3 offers microtransactions. Because what you've spent on old school RuneScape membership subscriptions in the last six years, 10 people spent that same amount yesterday on runescape three keys those yep. are the players that jagex needs not you not yep. MMOs are expensive to make and they're expensive to maintain which by the way whoever over at amazon games thought that a one-time purchase of a 40 dollars game was going to be enough to sustain a huge mmo uh, wait wait new world didn't have a sub hold on what Aeon, you played it if you're still here. I don't know if Aeon's still here. If you're still here, Aeon, does it have a sub? My roommate played it. Does it did he pay a sub? Was it really one time? New World MMO sub cost. What? Bro, whoever thought that that game wouldn't need a subscription is out of their skull. Bro, <laughs> no, it's an MMO. You're insane. Whoever came up with that Amazon money, though, <laughs> tell that to Twitch. Well, what is what are you doing? What, what did you think was going to happen? And then who decided? that microtransactions were going to be your next alternative and this is what you have in the store <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is ugly i'm learning that the best way to get loads of money is to either make a fake nft game or mobile game oh yeah uh, it's why it's why gotcha games are so profitable you don't need genuine depth you need the appearance of depth you need the you need the allusion to there being something good. 
and a good th- uh, what I'm you know I'm gonna point to Lost Ark for this Lost Ark. All I'll give that game in a positive light is goddamn was it shiny, man it was shiny. But I'm glad that I'm a fully mentally developed and have actual critical thinking skills. And when a game is extremely shiny, I go, man, why is it so shiny? Is there a reason why it's so shiny? And if the answer isn't, oh, the point of the game is graphical fidelity. There's usually an ulterior motive behind its shininess. It's usually because there's nothing to genuinely offer. (laughs) What is this? Is this the this is the as what as what the thing I did? <laughs> Not a whole lot off limits. What the fuck is this little like what as what the? Had <laughs> <That> ice cream. <laughs> you, you should have included the part where I zoomed in. Now it just looks like a, a schizo. <laughs> <laughs> There's like three things on this I could be zooming in on. It could have. <laughs> I picked the most non standout thing. It could have been zooming in on this. <laughs> That's why Genshin Impact is so played. Yeah. You, you don't need any. You don't need genuine depth to a game to get people in. And you don't need it for Wells. Because Wells are the type of people that they don't care about depth, they don't care about the mechanical expertise that went into making Dark Souls as a gameplay loop so satisfying. All they care about is the dopamine fix. It is it is it is literally like the step from gambling addiction, probably. Uh, I say probably because I'm not going to pretend my thoughts are fully solidified on that aspect of it. But it's the same dopamine rush of spend money, get get good, feel good chemicals. Well, in this company is a gotcha game made by a company which doesn't quite grasp the concept of gotcha. It's and just is a really good fucking game with amazing story. What's Limbus Company? What? You gamble in Genshin? Oh yeah, you do. You gamble with pools. And it, my problem. This is as as derogatory and reductive as it sounds when I say I have a fully developed brain. I I'm not being 100% sarcastic. It's like 80% sarcasm when I say that. But it's because when a game has a mechanic in it called pity system when it is that transparent that they go, Oh no, if you, if you don't win enough, well, the pity system will make sure you win. Bro. That's literally how slot machines works work. That's literally how casinos steal more of your money. That, that's, it, that's literally how it works. And you're willingly going, well, no, they let me win sometimes though. Really? Really? I feel like the the dissonance to say that with complete sincerity is immense. To say, well, it feels bad that I've I, I I'm not winning when I spend enough money. So so eventually it gives it to me. Do you, do you know why it gives it to you eventually? It's, well, yeah, it's because it feels no, it's not because it feels bad. It's because if it does that, you're gonna perceive it that way, and then you'll give them more money and you'll lose more and keep going to get what you want until the pity system takes over again. The house always wins. Go play New Vegas. Like, I'm not gonna take gaming opinions from it, especially when it comes to design. From someone who explicitly defends Genshin in any gotcha game as something that is anything removed from completely unredeemable. Because the argument I usually hear is, well, it's not that bad because they have the pity system. That's why it's that bad, though. Because it needs that to keep you playing. That's why it's gross. Because you're using that, too. Which is what they want. 
unregulated gambling, mind you. Oh, no, it's completely... It's a fucking shit show. Limbus Company's peak fiction and depression with a massive chunk off good fucking game with depart... What is it? What? You're not saying what it is. I'm getting the answer back that I got years ago when I was like, what's 100% orange juice? And every person on my friends list went, well, it's orange juice, duh. And didn't answer my question. So I didn't play it for three years. <laughs> I also have a full, fully delved up brain. Proud of you, Zen. They practically begged to not make money. <laughs> What's fucking cracking, baby? <laughs> 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 The biggest problem that new MMOs are going to face are getting a true player base. Not the players that are there on day one, seeing how long they can wait in a queue. Not even the ones that's that going to be us on Dawn Trolls and experience a little bit of end game. I'm talking about the true player base, the player base that if your <gasps> game shuts down, down, they will be on the front lines doing whatever they can to create their own version of your game, some sort of backup code to keep the community alive. Those are the players that you're looking for. They're there because they love the game. They're there for real. And those are going to be extremely difficult to get because chances are they already have that. No, I'm sorry. What the fuck was that? Players that you're looking for. They're there. What is this? What is this MMO? I don't know what this little hobgoblin man is, but I want to play as it. They're there because they love the game. They're there for real. And those are going look at to him. be look at his walk cycle. difficult to get. <laughs> it's like a Lollafell, but better. Club Penguin died. Uh, I was playing RuneScape. Chances are, they already have that game. They're already a part of that community. And most of them aren't going to be feeling that way about multiple MMOs. At this point, new MMOs have to pull their player base from other MMOs. You're gonna be trying to pull players from WoW and from Final Fantasy and from RuneScape and Guild Wars 2. The players that already know what they like and dislike about massive multiplayer online games. I like that to show off of F14, he just keeps showing Limsa. <laughs> there's, there's nothing else in that game but Limsa. Which means that by default, <laughs> the new MMO is immediately competing with the top of that hill. Could you imagine trying to enter that space and these are the guys you're standing next to trying to gain their players? Good luck! The best kind of player base to get for a brand new MMO is a new MMO player. Ones that haven't experienced the other ones yet, and you're going to be their first experience, <coughs> which would mean trying to appeal uh, to the iPad babies, the TikTok brains, the fucking Fortnite war zoners. You know, the ones that can't even hold their attention to short form content unless there is a video below the main content that has some car surfing on ramps so that their weird brains allow them to stay there. Do you drop a 14 year old into vanilla while Northshire and see how long it takes for their brains to start freaking out? because there's not enough colors and numbers. The generation following us is not going to really be interested in this. I'm going to be playing RuneScape in a retirement home. Slower paced MMO style that we on a private server. Why would they run around Elwyn Forest or go kill goblins in Lumbridge? Should we try WoW? This looks so much this looks like so much fun. This 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 looks fun. This looks like fun. I'm going to be honest. There's something about this it just looks fun. Should we try WoW? I have an ESO key. I actually got an ESO key from that thing I brought up in the Discord a while back for like the Dell giveaway they were doing. And what in apparently I own ESO. I bought it <laughs> a long time ago. So I just have a spare key now. <laughs> I think Steam took it though. If you try WoW, I sub again. <laughs> I thought WoW was gone. Oh no, we'd be doing old school WoW also or whatever it's called, Bot Classic. Having a retirement home server sounds fun. Oh my god, it totally does, actually. Oh my god. That sounds sick. When in that same time frame, they could have had three adrenaline pumping Warzone games to, to feel dopamine from. They don't chase the same numbers going up that we do. It makes me wonder if the generation following us uh, when they when they get to be our age, if they're going to be more interested in, in goal-oriented things like long-term MMO goals. I don't see new generations coming into MMOs, and I don't see current MMO players jumping to a new one. Uh, when they've already established their community and love for one that they've been a part of for years. That's interesting. Cause I, 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 
I've said it before, and I, I genuinely find videos on TikTok that are feeding into the algorithm of playing multiple videos at once to be genuinely harmful, especially if you're like developing. And I have found even normal TikTok to be a very, very detrimental to my desire to watch longer form content proactively. And it might not affect everyone the same way, but it is curious how MMOs might change. But I would, I would also argue the problem is more a perceived one than one that actually exists. Because indie games are having no problem being slow burners and picking up younger demographics still. So I don't think MMOs will have that problem. The biggest issue with MMOs is that they're not creating a genuine experience around a complex scenario made up of systems that might not all work together perfectly, but work together well enough to facilitate the experience that they want. Like we have right now. Runes, uh, FF14. Uh, if I ever get my inventory video done, my big point in it is I don't want to see 99% of FF changed. I really don't. I don't want to see the problems in RuneScape removed. I don't want to see the problems in any game removed because the friction and trouble that you overcome as a group and as a player and as a player base beyond just the solo player, the group clan, the player base as a whole, that's what fosters the feeling of community. That's what fosters that, that weird respect you have for each other. I don't know how much that iPad kid debate is actually in a medical reality and not just another moral panic. It's weird though. I would, I would, the problem is yes, I'm not a doctor. I, I'm not a psychologist specifically. I like, I would wager the problem isn't just TikTok. There's, it probably extends deeper into, especially I'm in, I'm in the West, I'm in America. I can only talk about America. It's a, easily a conversation that could devolve into the education system a, 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 where uh, someone who went to public schools, I was seeing programs that would help me adjust to being an adult, you being know, cut and removed. And, and from my understanding, I don't know, maybe it's gotten worse. Maybe it's gotten legitimately better. Maybe it's gotten legitimately worse. I, I don't know. I try. I'm not in that world. I'm not immersed in it. I don't work in it, certainly. And that's why I'm curious if it's a perceived issue that he's bringing up or a genuine issue that does exist. I think the current games that we have in the MMO space are going to remain there at least for as long as both the players and the devs have that desire. In order for an MMO to, to take the reins, become the next big thing, to really be the game changer, it's going to have to be very outside the box. Never done before, a big risk. Chances are the next MMO to really overtake these or even see equal success as these hasn't even been thought of yet. But I just have this strange feeling that the next MMO that comes out that has six classes to choose from, a woodcutting skill, and 2004 ass fetch quests is not gonna be the one to see themselves at the top of that hill with those. It's just a hunch. three years is supposedly gonna be the MMO that changes everything. They I, I completely disagree with him on this point. Uh, and I, honestly, I'm gonna point to games like Valheim. And I'm going to point to games like Minecraft. People love slow progression. They the, People love that feeling of achieving something. And Valheim is a better example than Minecraft. Of that, I think. And Valheim blew the fuck up with everybody. It got popular fast. I... I I feel like the viewpoint of having class abilities and skills to level is a, as, as a thing that holds the genre back is an explicitly almost pessimistic view. I disagree entirely on this point. I, I don't think having a skill that levels is the problem. It's about the journey. 
Yeah, that's that's what MMOs are. It's literally what the MMO is. Will it be the same for alphas is the question. Yeah. No, I'm fully confident in what I'm saying right now. Unlike the the like TikTok might be as harmful as I think it is. This is because Elden Ring was super popular. And it wasn't just popular with people that were 20 plus. Games that are RPGs with leveling systems and the explicit goals with assigning number values to skills and abilities as a character are not losing any ground in their popularity. I think it's absurd to think that in MMOs that the equivalent would lose their per, their foothold in popularity. I, I, I That's why, back to what I said, I'm curious if it's a perceived problem with TikTok and short-form content that leading to his opinion or a genuine issue. And I don't see it being explicitly that i don't see it being a, a genuine issue that kind of permeates an entire generation i think that's very reactionary to think i i would say if anything it might create some more apparent social quirks at worst but once somebody is is fully developed it's I would expect it to be about the same as it is now because pretending that we all didn't have phases and moments of, you know, I, I can't, I can't focus on this thing. This is who I am. This is my whole personality. This sort of thing. Uh, it, it happened. Like there, I, I, I was super into platformers for a very long time and then I stopped playing them. And then I super got into, into third person shooters and I super got into first person shooters and I was I couldn't really have fun with anything but first person shooters and then I've come back around and I'm gonna thank you guys for part of it to be honest because you guys give me an outlet to want to share my real passions with games but more than stream and the parasocial aspect of sharing things with you guys it's I've said it months ago the game that brought back my love for video games was Monster Hunter World very explicitly because I was already getting jaded and tired of every single goddamn game that I saw coming out, having this focus on animation fidelity and making sure everything had to be seen and visualized. So the player could gaze upon the incredible effort the dev team went through. And then I played monster hunter world where I was on something's head and it just shoved itself through a wall. And I still could just like shove my sword into its skull, even though I couldn't see its head or me. And I was just having fun and I went, oh my God, a video game. <laughs> like, I haven't played a game that was not ashamed to be a video game and have a big budget at the same time in, in uh, five years. And I, I kind of fell back in love with gaming. I think the bigger problem is content addiction. Oh yeah, the, the, if anything, the issue that I see being a problem, like a genuine issue, is gambling addiction becoming much more prominent because developmental years are crazy with how influenced you can be as a person based on your environment and if all you're consuming is content that produces a sacrifice to gain dopamine to possibly gain back the sacrifice and more which would be your money or in this case, like in-game currency, I definitely could per perceive that as being what I referred to as like the, the social quirk you might have. And that gambling addiction is not a good thing. It is a very, it's not good because it bleeds out into so many other aspects of risk versus reward behavior that it's extremely harmful. And I mean, We've already seen some like uh, was it was it Denmark aside from China that banned loot boxes that didn't explicitly like show their their drop stats or whatever. Don't understand gambling. If I win, I'm relieved, not ecstatic. It's that that's then you don't have an explicitly addictive personality. So, congrats, <laughs> you're dodging that bullet. Because for me, I don't understand the point of gambling. 
unless I can sway it into my favor. It's why like I would have no money putting money into an investment that I'm confident in if I if I, I, I also can just burn the money and not financially feel like I'm in a rut. But if I'm at a blackjack table, why the fuck would I give you my money? The odds are implicitly not in my favor. I'm not going to give you money. And I'm not going to learn card counting to like sway it into my favor either. Because I don't also care. Also sell and music scrolls. What do you mean? Shut up. Shut up. We're continuing. I had this dev blog come out at the end of March and I was like, okay, you know, this looks cool. And on the side of the screen, I see some quests about killing 20 goblins. <laughs> and I'm like, no fucking way that this is the revolutionary thing. The next big MMO is not going to have kill 20 goblins as a fucking quest. I promise. They've already lost in my eyes. Yeah, there's well, no way. There's just no way another one of those is going to be the one to be up there. Yeah. It will. Dark Souls has it. It just uh, it just obfuscates it. Dark Souls does it. Elden Ring does it. And those are those are games that are not just implicitly popular with like 20 plus year old people. Elden Ring does it. That quest is hidden behind the oh I need to go grind. That's all it is. So it'll still exist. It just might not be explicitly on the list like that. Oh, there's a few things that I believe the next big MMO needs to do differently. I think the number one priority is to come up with a structure that eliminates the locust swarm effect. Finish this as fast as possible. Get to max level as fast as possible. Get to the end game, the best in slot, the min maxing as fast as possible. It's a real shitty habit that we've developed with video games, especially MMOs recently. I think it's played such a big role in the overall downfall of MMOs, why everything feels underwhelming now. Unfortunately, I think as long as a game structure exists that allows for that kind of mentality, it's not gonna find the success that it would have found back when we weren't playing games like that. There's a video by Josh Drive Hayes that I highly recommend, ba like explicitly based on what he's saying right now. Um, hold on, let me pull it up real quick. I'm not, we're not gonna watch it. I don't have time, but I will put it in chat for you guys in the Discord. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. There's a video by Josh Drive Hayes where he's reacting to one of his older videos called wait this isn't josh i'm sorry you're on the wrong stream guys content on games so, so he has a video games Give pause god damn it he has a video called have guides ruined games or gaming highly recommend this video it is like 50 minutes i agree with almost every point that he makes in this video and the short answer is yeah they have the longer answer is yes they have but there's more nuance to it than you would think I'm going to put this in the games channel for anyone who wants to actually watch this later. Because we could go into guides and grind for a long time. In the golden age of MMOs, when things were actually enjoyed. That's why we want to play games solo now. It's why you can get from level 1 to 70 playing by yourself in WoW. And that's not going to make for a successful MMO. You might as well just make a single player game. Other MMOs would benefit. I mean, FF14 is literally doing that right now. They're adding a single player mode, and I would beg to differ again that it might actually make a very popular MMO if you have the option to play it solo. Yeah, I'm honestly, it might, it might help it. Benefit a lot by trying a more RuneScape style quest system where it feels almost like a mission with a lot of benefits afterwards rather than just the same generic copy pasted coding of a quest of going and getting 10 mushrooms on a tree and bringing it back for XP. It's the reason why a game like RuneScape, which people have always poked fun at its graphics, feels more alive than a game with fucking Unreal Engine 5. It's Yep, Rune. If anyone actually does try old school RuneScape, do the questing. RuneScape's questing is unbelievably engaging. It it, it has genuinely well written interactions, and it feels like you are uncovering something every time. It is not like I, I'm gonna say it's better questing than FF14 when it comes to side questing a lot of the time. 
because a lot of ff14 side quests boil down to especially the early on ones boil down to go here kill x thing come back runescape is hey go here figure out what's going on maybe kill thing and maybe when you kill thing a puzzle is going to open up now you got to complete the puzzle good luck and who knows where you're going to go art style is very charming i love runescape style it's very fun the way it feels when you're a part of that world. And I think a lot of MMOs kind of look the other way when it comes to structuring things like that. They're too scared to try something else for progression. I don't know, they just play it too safe. The world has to feel alive and everyone's end goal can't be the same. I'm not a game dev, I'm just a consumer. I complain. <laughs> My role here is to complain. <laughs> I'm not the guy. If I knew what this next MMO looked like, I would be trying to make it. I promise you I would. I don't think uh, any current game devs have really wrapped their head around what it takes to bring an MMO to the next level, but I think with a lot of emerging game engines and technology we're capable of now, we're eventually going to see that thing that really makes our eyes widen and our mouths salivate. It's gonna happen. Could be a year from now, 10 years from now, our generation, of MMO players, probably the only generation of MMO players, are going to be looking for that game, and we'll know it when we see it. But for now, I think we're just gonna be cozy in the games that we play. For a more optimistic look, I think if RuneScape has taught me anything, other MMOs have really not experimented with shit. They have not really opened up the sandbox of themselves. The fact that World of Warcraft just recently released a hardcore version after it took someone developing an entire plugin to do it just kind of shows how they haven't really tried shit yet and the fact I, I i still want ff hardcore as an option i we talked about it for a while and i might still do it i haven't written off the idea completely but i would love an ff14 hardcore option like it there's so much replayability opportunity in MMOs already and adding an option that adds genuine stakes to every step of your journey makes the narrative assignment of adventurer so much stronger it ties you to the game even more gee I missed the old school runescape follow circle follow circle has taught me anything other MMOs have really not experimented with shit they have not really opened up the it. sandbox of themselves the fact that World of Warcraft just recently released a hardcore version after it took someone developing an entire plugin to do it just kind of shows how they haven't really tried shit yet and the fact that they just tried a battle royale is even funnier they're trying you know we'll, we'll, give, we'll give it to them blizzard's trying they might be 10 years too late to the battle royale boom we mentioned earlier but they're trying and we've got to give them that credit blizzard has done everything in their power to self-destruct and they're still standing it's incredible if they're not going down by now they're never going down all right <laughs> that company's here to stay which gives me confidence that other MMOs will be here to stay too. They just they follow each other and ends up looping. Oh, that yeah yeah. I wish FF14 had that. So we don't really have anything to worry about when it comes to our favorite games, our cozy home base being gone. And I think a lot of MMOs need to take advantage of this world that they've created and the different capabilities their engines have and look and see how they can approach things differently like RuneScape has with hardcore modes, Iron Man modes, and region locks with leagues, restricted game modes, challenges, people like watching challenges. And I think a lot of the big MMOs nowadays have the ability to implement something like that to keep their current active player bases occupied and entertained for a long time. And all that being said, I truly hope I look like an idiot a week from today when that next big thing is announced. <laughs> I hope I'm wrong. I really do. I think there's a future for MMOs and we'll all be here for it. Anyway, I think that's all I got. I've been putting together the house video. It's just five days of a lot of footage. It's a lot of fun. Don't get me wrong. I also have a special project I can't really talk about right now, uh, but I'm working on that beginning of, of May. Other than that, uh, it's been a pleasure. Great seeing you. Take it easy. That was a good video. That was good. For anyone curious, this channel is Jimmy with a one. But 
I, if anything, the next big MMO is going to be the same sort of execution we saw with Power World, where instead of its own unique idea, it will be a successful amalgamation of three or four different concepts in one. Because right now, every MMO has kind of been an iterative thing of, oh, we've seen that before. Oh, we've seen that before, and you added X to it. But it'll be, oh, we've seen that before from multiple different areas of the industry all working together. That's my guess, anyway. Anyway.